Doctors speak in riddles almost designed to confuse. Why say purpuric ecchymosis when you can just say bruise? It's imperative a doctor should be clear and understood, but that doesn't mean throwing out our jargon for good. These aren't business neologisms or marketing word salad. They're the poetry of medicine, an enthralling ballad. Our gods, myths and monsters you'll soon know, each word a story. Hypo, meaning low. Look closer and you see past the mystery, etymology a thing of beauty and a lesson in history. We begin with anti-vaxxers who don't like burgers. Vaccine from vaccin pertaining to a cow, une vache, as the first vaccine used cowpox. Let's instead call them pro-disease. Doctors try to prevent and cure dis-ease. They choose specialties, not specialities, like cardiology, ophthalmology, obstetrics, or the one who stands opposite, Paediatrics, the treatment of children, or orthopaedics, the surgeons who fix broken hips and road traffic accidents. But in the days of poorer child health, orthopaedic surgeons spent their time correcting club foot, scoliosis, and rickets. So they were literally making straight children. Children play with dice, like a dodecahedron, Greek for 12 sides. Dodecadactylon is Greek for 12 fingers. Run that through Latin, as words often are, and you get duodenum digitorum, which you'll recognise as the beginning of your small bowel, so named as it was 12 finger breadths in length. If it becomes inflamed, one suffers duodenitis, itis meaning inflammation. Hepatitis is a swollen liver, and dermatitis is inflamed skin, for which one might use a topical cream from topos, meaning specific place. Now that you know dactylos is finger, polydactyly is too many fingers, and arachnodactyly means long fingers like a spider's legs, seen in some genetic conditions. If you wrap those long fingers around someone's neck, they will asphyxiate. A, Greek prefix for without, and sphyxia meaning throb or beat, in this case, a heart beat. The suffocation connotation of asphyxiation came much later. Suffocation, however, came soon enough to those unable to answer the riddle posed by the Sphinx, the Greek one, not the Egyptian. Which creature has one voice and yet becomes four-footed, then two-footed, then three-footed? Incorrect answers led to death by strangulation, and thus we derive sphincter, a circular muscle that tightens like a band. One sphincter enjoys notoriety, but within your body there are millions, including the pyloric sphincter. A pylorus was a gatekeeper, just as the pylorus in your stomach regulates passage into the duodenum. One man solved the sphinx's riddle, and the poor girl had to strangle herself. Damn small print. That man was Oedipus, but um, don't get me started on his eponymous syndrome, uh, my mother wouldn't like it. Lest you think I'm favouring the Greeks, let's give Latin its due. Anima is the life force, or breath. Thus, an animal is something that breathes a living thing. A heart attack causes sufferers to sense the anima, leaving their body. Angor animi. While we English speakers perform resuscitation or reawakening, the French choose reanimation, reintroducing life which I think is rather more poetic. Here is a fornix, Latin for arch, and found in the head, the eye, and the vagina. The last one is rather apposite, as women who made their living entertaining men did so beneath the arches, hence they fornicated. Change merely one letter, and it's altogether a less pleasant prospect, as formication, from the Latin for ant, is the sensation of creepy crawlies all over your skin, which occurs secondary to some nerve damage, and is a type of paresthesia. And we're back to Greek again. Replace beside with without, and you have achieved anesthesia, without feeling. Sometimes Latin and Greek coexist. Amorosis fugax is a fleeting loss of vision. Ad meaning next to, renal meaning kidney gives us the adrenal, a gland, next to the kidney, which produces adrenaline. Epi, meaning next to, nephron, meaning kidney, gives us epinephrine, which is adrenaline. Kidney doctors are supposed to be the brightest of our ranks, but they can't even decide what language to speak. 
Mind you, the rest of us have classical confusion even in the space of a single word. In our language also lies evidence of our mistakes. For hundreds of years we believed disease stemmed from an imbalance of the four humours, and personalities became associated. To this day one may be described as melancholic, choleric, sanguine, and phlegmatic. We thought heavenly bodies exert an influence upon our health, so the stars caused influenza, and the moon made us lunatics. We call this a pupil, for if you look closely you'll see a tiny version of yourself reflected, small, like a child, or a pupil. Before that, anatomists even thought there was an apple inside the eye, from which we get a schmaltzy moniker for your paramour, whom you might take to bed. Not to fornicate, as we've already covered, you would be covered by an arch, no, in your bed to sleep, perchance to dream, of Greek gods like Morpheus, the Greek god of dreams, who lends his name to morphine. In a bottle, it's exogenous. When we make our own feel-good chemicals, it's endogenous, coming from within. Endogenous morphine or endorphin. Morphine is rather Moorish, so Bayer brought out diacetylmorphine in 1895 with the bold and somewhat dubious claim of being a non-addictive panacea. But even when shortened to diamorphine, the name just wasn't snappy enough, but boy was it popular. People said they felt like heroes, and hence heroin was born. Born from, genic, genes, from whence we came. Cancer comes from a carcinogen, an allogen comes from another, and when exposed to air, hydrogen produces water. Ye gods, they can be vengeful, and strike you down with a stroke. Achilles and his tendon you already know, but what of Atlas, doomed to hold up the celestial sphere for all eternity? Your own globe rests atop the Atlas backbone. In case of bradycardia, one might administer atropine, derived from the atropa plant or Delhi nightshade. Atropa, without change, inflexible. Atropos, one of the three fates of antiquity, was unchanging, stubborn, and synonymous with death. With her abhorred shears, she ended mortals' lives with one snip of their thread, and yet lends her name to a life saving drug. Fates, it seems, are not without a sense of irony. Pterodactyls had wing fingers, Hermes just had wings, sprouting from his head, attached at the pterion. Before you sprouted, your gonads were guided by your gubernacular. The gubernaculum, or pilot, steers developing ovaries or testes into place and also results in the rather ridiculous word of gubernatorial. Alexander the Great steered his forces across the world, but after he died, the Diadochi, or the successors, warred for control of his empire. Dis Diadochokinesis. Dis meaning bad or wrong, Diadochi, successive, and kinesis, movement, is the inability to perform successive movements. It's caused by damage to the cerebellum, literally, a little brain. Cerebellum is the diminutive of cerebrum, and Latin is rather fond of this practice. Venter is belly, hence the ventral side of a person, so the heart's ventricles are actually small bellies. The heart's electrical wiring system has little bundles of sticks, small fasces or fascicles. A reet is a fishing net, a reticulum is thus a small fishing net, presumably for small fish. A reticular rash is one that conjures the appearance of a net cast over the skin. Canna means a reed or hollow stick. A small one is thus a cannula. Talking of reeds brings us to the original Me Too. The nymph Syrinx was known for her chastity, but relentlessly pursued by horny goat boy Pan. Fleeing his unwanted advances, the river nymphs transformed her into hollow water reeds that made a haunting sound when Pan's frustrated breath blew across them. Pan cut the reeds to make Pan pipes, and Syrinx, now a hollow tube, gave her name to the syringe. Syringes, phalanges, meninges, salpinges, Syrinx, phalanx, meninx, 
Salpinx. Our finger bones conjured lines of Roman soldiers. The lining around our brains is split into three meninges. The tough mother, the spider mother, and the tender mother. As you now know, meningitis implies inflammation of these layers. The Greeks played a trumpet called the salpinx, shaped like the tube taking eggs from the ovaries to the womb. Thus, a salpingo oophrectomy is removal of the fallopian tubes and the ovaries. Incidentally, the only word with three identical vowels all in a row that are each pronounced individually. The Greek hysteris gives us uterus, the womb, but also hysterical, as Greeks believed the womb wandered around the body causing disease, meaning only women could suffer from hysteria. Oh! <laughs> it is harder for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than it is for urine to pass through a diabetic, dia by name, to pass through. So named as untreated diabetes causes water to pass through a sufferer with uncontrolled micturition, also known as pissing. Diabetes mellitus causes high sugar in the blood and the urine. Mel, Latin for honey. Yes, doctors of old diagnosed it by tasting the sweet urine of sufferers. Hence the much rarer diabetes insipidus, unrelated to sugar, translates as passing through without taste. Sometimes classics just masks a lack of imagination on the part of the anatomist. Small pan, vinegar cup, Turkish saddle, tough stuff, black stuff, white ball, big hole. Some words are just nice to say, like the sibilant intersusception, cholidocolithiasis, or boborygmi. Let us end with a demonstration of how much you now know. Endocarditis. Inflammation within the heart. Well done. If I then tell you that grafting was an ancient practice of joining a cutting from one tree to another, then you will be able to tell me what an orthotopic hepatic allograft is. Correct place, liver, transplant from another. A donated liver implanted in place of the old one. Congratulations, you're on your way to being fluent in medical ease. Next time you visit the doctor, you'll reel off Latin with ease. But if said doctor doesn't communicate sanely, ask them, please explain these words plainly. If their bedside manner remains an incomprehensible atrocity, they might not know their olecranon from their ischial tuberosity. If you visit the hospital's radiology department, you will find beryllium liberally utilised as its low atomic number and density make it transparent to x-rays and its non-magnetic properties make it a key metal for MRI scanners. It is so named as its ore is the gemstone beryl from the Sanskrit by Durya. Berylare, Latin for to shine brightly like a beryl, gives rise to the French brillant and in English, brilliant. Who sponsored this video? I ended the video with some easy questions for you and you'll definitely remember those words better. Answering questions and solving puzzles reinforces learning better than just hearing information ever could, and that's what Brilliant offer. On top of making learning interactive, they also make it fun. I've got a whole bunch of videos about artificial intelligence in medicine planned, but my knowledge on the topic extends about as far as Terminator and Short Circuit, so to arm myself against the robots gearing up to take my job, and more importantly make decent videos for you, I have found Brilliant my one-stop shop for learning about algorithms and neural networks. They have over 50 different courses covering maths and science, including some of the concepts and principles I highlight in my videos talking about understanding scientific data. So, to join the human army as we defend ourselves against the robot overlords, or to just do something constructive when you're on the bus, go to brilliant.org slash medlife and sign up for free. Also, the first 200 people that go to the link will get 20% off the annual premium subscription. 3,000 years ago, ancient Greeks didn't have access to Brilliant, but they did have the Sphinx to pose them riddles, although a key difference is that Brilliant is unlikely to strangle you if you get a question wrong. Oedipus correctly answered the Sphinx's riddle, that the creature that has one voice and yet becomes four-footed 
and then two-footed, and then three-footed is, of course, a human. <laughs>